Let's start recording. All right. So let's breathe in deeply three times. Just release any, put any concerns you have aside for now. And just come to be present in this moment. If it helps, think about something that you're really truly grateful for, or something that's easy to love. Like a puppy or a baby or a tree, something really easy to feel connected and loving. Feel like your heart is smiling. You're just content to be alive right now. Your body's breathing. You're surrounded by people who care about you and care about the world. Now let's, let's take our heart energy and connect to a central column, a column of love and light that reaches down into the earth like tree roots branching out and grounds us. It reaches up into the sky like tree branches reaching for the sun. Allow that energy to stream forth through the top of your head into your body, what we call the third eye, into the throat chakra and the heart chakra, to the solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, just that column of energy moving, replenishing our cells, our organs, shifting our vibration into one of harmony and love. Now, if you still have any worries or thoughts or concerns that keep coming up, just for this moment, create an image of a ball of light or whatever works for you and put those concerns in it and ask your higher self or the great spirit or God or the universe to handle it for you. And just know that it's being taken care of. If you're greatest thing that you can do right now is tune into this vibration of love that you truly are. And keep breathing from a deep, centering, relaxing breath. Just feel yourself expand from your personality self to beyond to the larger part of who you are. See your, your spirit view move beyond your, your present circumstances, move beyond the community that you're in, and move beyond even the country and see yourself beyond the planet, just looking back at the planet, feeling this expansive energy of consciousness, of love and light, 
permeate the isness, the beingness that you are. This is a field of all possibilities, all potentials. This is a field beyond suffering, beyond grief, beyond worry. Allow this energy of love and light and strength and potential realities of harmony to immerse at your cellular level so that as we come back into our present day awareness, we bring this energy with us, this energy of all potentials, of miracles, of love. And let's just rest here in this place. If you have a question for your higher self, if you have an insight, we can ask upon guides or angels, teachers, or gurus, whoever you connect with, who you feel is an aspect of yourself giving you information right now. A wiser, teach yourself, an enlightened being, whatever it is. Know that anytime there's a question, there's also an answer. Anytime that there is a difficulty, there is also a solution right then, right then, available if we're in the right vibration to receive it. So that takes practice. It's practice to listen to know what our emotions are telling us. All a, a negative or a contracted emotion is telling us is that we're not tuned into that larger part of ourselves and we feel separate from others. But when we're in that place of love within us, we just love everyone just as they are. We even have enough love for the virus. We can love things that are hard to love. We can see everything as this eternal consciousness and that this point of reality is just one aspect of who we really are. We're powerful beyond measure, beings of eternal, immortal consciousness. And so from this perspective, our problems seem smaller. So one thing that we can do in any anytime we feel like we're powerless is to give love to another is to find that place of something that we're grateful for and, and send love out into the world around us, whether it be a tree, a flower, the sky, the earth, the sun, the moon, water. It can be people in need, a loved one, beings on the other side, we can send love to a dream of ours. We can send love to an intention or an aspiration. We can silently send love while we're driving down the street. 
to every passerby. We're never powerless, it just appears to be that way sometimes. And when we, we align ourselves with a state of love, and we give love, and we give gratefulness out as a fountain of our being, then more energy comes, more and more energy comes and fills us and overflows. And that's what is quoted in the Bible of the cup overfloweth. So when we're connected to that light and love that we are, and it's circulating through our field of energy and out and then back again, that's when we, we are capable of miracles. That's when we're capable of healing ourselves and others. That's when we're capable of receiving abundance in a joyful way and spreading that abundance. It could be an abundance of time. It can be abundance of dollars or pounds or euros or whatever currency. It's a currency, it's meant to flow. So our love is meant to flow. Now, I'd like for each of you to come up with something that you really would like to crystallize in your environment or to manifest in your reality and hold that intention in your heart. We're gonna draw upon the energy of the group right now to activate and enliven that intention, the quickening you might say, so that it manifests in your world. And then your job is to expect a joyous outcome, to visualize a joyful outcome or a peaceful one, whatever level outcome that you can imagine for this particular situation. It's the power of a heart coherent field. When we're in a place of love, everything is possible. I'm gonna draw in now energies from higher dimensions and energize this field of love. If you would like to receive abundant love, abundant abundance, abundance of joy and peace and harmony, physical vitality, say yes now. Yes. 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 Now let that energy flow in. See it transforming any grievances, any resentment that you might be holding on to, any judgment or lack belief. Lovingly allow who you've been and who others have been. And now call in the highest frequency that your body can handle to sustain you in this light and love throughout this new year. We are the ones we've been waiting for. It's not our government. It's not an outside fix. It's our own alignment with our divinity. As we remind each other that this is truth and this is so, we help create and reestablish heaven on earth.
Let's just stay in this silence for another minute or two. You see colors. You can feel adjustments or twitches in your body. Just know that you're being upgraded and tuned in. Let's take this energy, this energy of connection and light, and send it out to anywhere that people are suffering who are asking for solutions and help, whether it be because of COVID or healthcare workers who are needing extra support, or people making their transition back into their eternal state of consciousness. Let's send it out to the water and the air and the earth, and the sun, the elements, and the ether, all beings, all the plants and animals. Anyone desiring assistance can be reminded of their higher truth and their inner being. And their inner being who holds the answers. So our love right now is going out as a prayer of awakening, a prayer of remembrance, a prayer of quickening. Now ask that we become empowered conduits, uh, conduits of this light and love so that as challenges arise in our life, we have the strength and the tools to transmute the fear and doubt into love and strength and into healing and miracles in those cases where it's needed. And that gradually, that this state becomes our dominant state, not just something we access in meditation, but who we identify with more than our personality self as a limit, separate being, but as our unified being of light and love, that the personality is now in, at one with. My father and I are one. That means that we're not working and coming from separation and duality, but from unity and love. And that is the practice right now. If it helps, put your hands over your heart. And just say, I love you, I love you, I love you.
Now all you need to do in the future is put your hands back over your heart. Breathe deeply and you'll connect to this field of love. You don't need an hour of quiet meditation. You can do it in a couple seconds. Hour long meditations are good or walking in nature is wonderful. But if you can't do that, just connect to your heart and say yes to your inner being, yes to your higher truth, yes to love. We are so immeasurably supported. We are so immeasurably loved. We are not alone, we're not separate. Rise above the fear and step into your light and your power and your mastery. This is the call for these times. And then share that light however you can, through creativity, through your work, through your practice, through your meditation, through just saying, I love you to nature, or giving yourself a hug, or whatever you need to self-nurture. Know that all these are ways to keep the flow going. And by aligning yourself with love, even a thousand miles away, your love can be to someone else. Other people around the world are praying for you right now that you've never even met. Now let's take a few more deep breaths and start bringing our focus back from an expanded awareness back into the earth orbit, <laughs> back into our country, our community, and back into your home, wherever you are right now. And take a minute. Just move around in your body, wiggle, whatever body part feels like being moved. And then let's just like clench as many muscles as we can. Breathe deep and relax. Tighten all the muscles that we can. And then relax. One more time. And as we embrace this energy the next two weeks until our next call, I'd like to suggest that we practice seeing another as an aspect of herself. Seeing what appears to be discord as an opportunity to bring more harmony within our own mind, body, spirit. To look at the world of fresh eyes, the eyes of a child, the eyes of innocence. And ask the question often, how good can it get? Rather than how bad can it get? How good can it get? And by asking a leading question, it invites our mind to focus in a positive direction, which is its natural state, but we've let it go to 
the fear and fight or flight kind of response of protection. When we're in that aligned state, we really don't need protection because we're radiating love and only that frequency above can match us. So when people appear to be suffering or people appear to be doing things we don't prefer, let's ask our mind to serve our heart first and to see them with eyes of love. Because we can't shame anyone into a better behavior or a more loving outcome, but we can love our way there. Love really is a power that humanity is yet to employ for the benefit of all. And I say, let's say yes, for it's starting with us. Thank you, everyone. You want just give yourself a big hug. <laughs> These meetings always get my mind back in the right perspective. Because yeah, you do slip. It slips and then you start getting negative and then you think, no, no, no. <laughs> but it's still gonna hit you. The negative is still gonna hit you. It's not it won't go away, but you ride with it. You ride with it and you let it flow, yeah, into the positive, which it definitely is doing. I mean, I said last time, um, definitely. Um, I feel like it's getting like, was it Brian? Yeah, you said we're coming into the edge of Aquarius, which is my sign. Um, yeah, it's like the big crunch before the big summit before the positivity is it then starts to flow through all beings. Yeah but we're helping it on its way i understand that with our meetings yes yeah and just being ourselves yeah I mean, we don't have to be anything but ourselves in alignment and if we're in that place it's, it's kind of a playful sweet energy yeah we can't always be there but to recognize that that's it, it really is supposed to be our natural state and then we just as as humanity got kind of caught up in what i would call you know, some of the, the traditional wisdom teachers talk about monkey mind or you know the idea that, that we're, we're always either acquiring or um, wanting to change something outside or protect ourselves. So if we're in those states, uh, the mind is operating because it's programmed that way, but we can just say, hey, mind, we're going to go back to look at everything to be grateful for today and look at everything that is going right. And, and then all of a sudden the, the mind will obey <clears throat> the master, but we're the masters. Otherwise we just get caught up in the maelstrom of everybody else's energy and the collective consciousness. And so one of the gifts and one of the honors of being on the leading edge of shifting consciousness is to know that it really starts with us. We can wait for somebody else to show love first or change first to feel good, but we're going to be waiting a long time. So when we are the ones who yeah. drink that in and send it out, then it's so fun to me. One of my greatest joys is to see people get ahas and shift and know, oh, I don't have to wait till like every virus is eradicated on the earth or, you know, all the rainforests are replanted or, you know, like my partner or person in my life acts a certain way. If we can let go of all those things and just choose it now. And then oftentimes that's when those other things in the world shift too to a more positive outcome. And then that critical mass is really close. Like it will be the norm to be kind and, and generous and open and harmonious. And I believe we'll see that in our lifetime. So that's what uh, keeps me encouraged every day. Yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely think this year is going to be start of something very special. Definitely. I feel it. Yeah. Um, ever since we hit the 1st of January mm -hmm. it, it was like and it's weird really because last year in the new year 
like we were partying and I was going, oh, this year's going to be amazing. Of course, it didn't <laughs> happen that way. But yeah, you had a really quiet new year where there was no extravagant, oh, this is going to be great. You know, it was all calm and, full and, and quiet and just the two of us. And I thought, no, it's not been a big party, but so what? You know, in a way, doesn't that doesn't matter. that's actually a good thing because um, I do feel this year is going to be better now. Um, and it wasn't a big party that set it off. It was just being quiet and calm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, does anyone else want to share anything? I would like, uh, after a couple minutes of sharing, to ask Jay to give us some of his pointers for. Tapping. How about you, Jay? Did you want to comment on anything? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I'll tell you another another tool that I use is um, is the is a binaural beats. And I remember Bob Barbara when she was doing the meditations on Monday, mm -hmm. Monday five p.m. Pacific time. She, she mentioned that she does that as well. So I find that really helpful as well. Yeah. So I don't, will Bob be doing those in future again? Do you know? Um, I think that she wants to, she has a, um, she has a family member in kind of a critical state. And so her right. energy has been devoted to like family care right now. Yeah. Um, and so if that shifts, I think she'll have more time and focus to do the call. I see. Because I think that helps her too, you know. Well, yeah. It does. I'm, yeah. So we'll see. And um, I, I think she definitely has the interest and the heart to do it. But yeah, I agree that um, that it is wonderful. The binaural beats because it's really like the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain when they're in this coherent. Again, the coherent is like you know this is incoherent is kind of like this jagged energy, and then the sine wave of a coherent wave is really what we're looking at in the heart mind spirit and so you know in the bible when they say love god with all your heart mind will and soul it's saying be you know the divinity within you the way you do that is linking all those in these coherent fields um, and that's really a physics term you can have constructive interference which is that two waves come together and get bigger or it can be destructive interference where like a positive wave and a negative wave hit and you Kind of get that discordant energy so the idea of coherence is really to like raise the vibe so we're like well i would describe it as if you're in a plane and you're in turbulence um the pilots usually want to go above or below that turbulent cloud so it's a smoother ride and we have the ability to do that by tuning in so binaural beats are a way to get the left and right hemispheres to sync up of the brain and then it also has a physiological effect on the body in the blood flow and the way that the heart rhythms are are then balanced out too so that's a great tool and yeah. i just actually read a report that was from the cia that was released in 80 it was actually done by the cia in 1983 but it was released recently of these um you know just making things more known to the public that they did a lot of study with um, that technique, binaural, uh, you know, hemisync and, and the fields. And they used a lot of Istak Bentov's, who wrote Stalking the Wild Pendulum. And he's, he's an amazing bioengineer and back in his day that figured out, because he was a meditator, what actually happens when you're in that synchronic state and he could describe it. So I thought it was interesting that, you know, the CIA was using this stuff way back when and uh, also validated it it's as a scientific method that works for us to tune into these states. So thanks for sharing that. That's that's nice. I have um, used it in the past as myself and had you know where you have the, the headset on so you're you're hearing it that way. Right. Yeah. So what about tapping? What what makes that something that a tool that you? you yeah, I just find I, I don't know too much about the science behind it, but I just use it and I find it works. I've been using it for about two years, a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. I try to do it every day, mm -hmm. at least once a day. That's like a, my my ritual goal: once a day to do that. Mm -hmm. 
And what basically what it is, is um, emotional freedom technique, EFT, or tapping it's also known by, I think it's created by Roger Callahan, Gary Craig, Vista, they're still around, uh, they're based in the States. And what, what you're doing basically is you're tapping on specific points in the body, energy points, meridian points, and you, you're uh, basically release, helping release at energy. I don't know if it's trapped energy or maybe stuck energy um, out and helping the body, the body meridian system flow better. That's a good way of describing that. No, actually I start, um, the, the specific sequence I do is I, I start here near the third eye and then I move, so I do about four, six taps there and then move to yeah, that's the side of the head and then below the eye, eye there mm -hmm. and then about halfway down down towards the side of your body mm -hmm. actually yeah you do that as well nice. and then and then like a karate chop nice. in the hand mm -hmm. yeah, I and then you repeat that and then also there's a part also where you also you look look up, look down, roll your eyes around, hum hum mm, mm, for about five seconds, count one, two, three, and then repeat, repeat the whole the sequence again. So it takes about one, two minutes to do. Mm -hmm. cool. And and then I just find the the rest of the day flows much better after doing that. It's interesting you say about the tapping on the forehead because I was actually looking into, because I get sinus problems, hmm. and I was looking into a, me a medical, you know, I wasn't thinking of meditation. I was looking at how, how, we, how you can, um, it can help. And it actually did say tapping with the finger on there can actually help, and it does help relieve, if you do it quite, you know, and, and it, it helps to relieve that sin the sinuses. So hmm. I was actually doing it for a medical reason. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, was in, that was interesting. Thank you. Yeah. This is another one for sinuses is just taking your thumbs and moving them across. I don't know if I'm in the light enough for you to see. Oh, okay. okay. And that can open up the passages there. Uh, so the tapping works on the meridian points, as Jay said. And the, what really is happening is, is like we're just reprogramming our body. Like we're in a stress state. It's okay. Like, you know, everything's going to be okay. You know, you can program through these points, just like a computer, you're putting in a program and you're going to these points of the body which regulate all the organs in, in the major uh, systems, like the circulatory system, the digestive system and so on. Just by going through that circuit and you're reprogramming it back to that harmonious you know, flow state where then it, if there is any kind of discord, whether it's energetic before it manifests into a disease or a problem, it can change it. And if it is already manifested, it can alleviate some of the conditions. So it is a healing technique as well as uh, an emotional uh, freedom technique. And yeah, and I think it's the, the points you're tapping on are, are the same points you they put pins in for ac acupuncture mm -hmm. oh, as yeah. well, I've heard. Yeah, there's, it's a fascinating, the whole, um, the whole meridian system and the Ida Pingala and the Nadi points and they're like, it's, it's complex, but it, it, I, what I like about the tapping method is it's simple. You know, you can do it. Yeah. When I had my business, I, I had a um, small business and, you know, sometimes there'd be like 50 people in there at a time. And the, just my partner and I trying to deal with all the needs, you know, I would just sit there and go like this, just like under the counter <laughs> and, and, and just self-regulate and breathe and, you know, sometimes I even go like this, but this is also a point that, you know, if um, if a dog's unconscious, you can tap it with like a point of a, a pencil and jab it and the dog will come back. So we can use that point too. And it's like, so much of this is fascinating to me, but really it's, if we take breath, it's kind of the cheapest and easiest method. It's always available to us, just three deep breaths will also program your body back to that flow state or at least a less severe um, intensity of whatever you're going through. And then this marma point on your, on your right ear at the 
the bottom of the lobe, you press that six times and that helps increase confidence. And that is um, part of the um, Amarma Shakti Siddha, Siddha Veda, Veda lineage that um, Vereni and I are both taking a 100 day course starting in a couple of weeks. Um, and so we'll have more information to share with you on that. Um, but again, that's a, a lineage that has passed down. Again, the, the same, like the idea that we're programming our body, we're aware that we can not just be reacting to the states around us, but creating them. And so all of these little tools, I like having a bunch of different tools in my toolbox because sometimes there's just playing on a happy music sound and the kind of swaying around the house or moving or, or singing can shift me into a higher state. Sometimes nature to me always works too, just going outside and, or being even near a plant. I always have flowers around because I love like the energy of flowers and the scents and the colors. And so, you know, if we can't get outside, even aromatherapy, you know, some kind of, of water can be really um, beneficial an in, in, indoor fountain or just even blessing some water and, you know, putting the idea of you're energizing it with love and then drinking that throughout the day. All these ways are just to get ourselves to recognize our power rather than our disempowered state. So I have a little bowl of water next to my Buddha and he's got little glass beads inside. So I do pray. I don't drink it though. <laughs> I just have it there as on, on my shrine. Uh, I don't actually drink it, but but I do, I pray with it. Yes, I always have a little bowl of water. Yeah. And water holds memory as you know, many studies have shown. Everything really does hold like a memory of a current of that. So, you know, sometimes we can be affected by fields of energy that we're not even aware of that are ours. And so one way of uh, self-regulating and knowing that is like, oh, I'm feeling something. And you can say, you know, where you feel it in the body and just kind of squeeze it a little bit. And so there is a, a blog on human harmonics on tapping. There's also the mortar march, which is a Sue mortar technique. Um, and her father developed that, which again is another way of, of like a power alignment pose. You can look that up on the site. And anybody else have like something that they do for alignment and, and just self-regulation? To me, like being in a group energy like this really helps because Oh, yeah. It feels like yeah. it feels like a group hug. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. How about Michelle, Adi, do you guys have anything to say? Feel free to, to participate if you'd like, but no need to if you don't. <laughs> I see your um, I've I've got something to say if I can. Sure. Um my best friend um, died two years ago. Um, she'd fought cancer for 10 years. And since then, I have this thing that I need to go down the garden mm -hmm. and plant stuff and um, tend to... Um, I, I, I sit on the floor. I just feel I need earth. And it's, it's just a, a crazy feeling. But, I mean, like today, I thought, tomorrow I might just go out I mean it's winter that there's nothing really to do but I just feel closer to her and closer to another being mm -hmm. with with earth I know it sounds silly but no it, it's true it doesn't sound silly at all yeah that's a great practice I'm glad you found that connection I mean nature has a specific hurts that when we go out and I'll go out and bare feet all the time there's snow out there and I'll still go out and stand at least for you know a, depending on how cold it is <laughs> how long I'll stand out there and I'll go out in the sunlight I'll go out in moonlight and I'll connect with the earth and her rhythms because we really are a part of nature not separate it's not something we just have outside the glass of our houses and when that grounding technique has you know there's a, a video or a documentary on grounding an earthing they call it and just being out in nature and there's uh, in japan they call it forest walking i think and so like each culture has its own 
remembrance of the value of nature. And so, yeah, that's really, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it because it's, uh, it's not nothing that soothes us and makes us feel connected to those we love, whether in spirit form or on the earth, is silly ever. It's just, it's, it's really our spirit saying, here, here's an impulse, go do that. It'll make you feel better, make you feel loved and connected. So it's, it's great that you're sensitive and intuitive enough to know to follow that impulse. And that's really what this new earth is calling us to do, not to just operate in the head like, oh, I should finish this or do this task. It's like, no, right now I need that. I need a connection with earth and to follow that. So that's wonderful. Thank you. It it, it does feel uh, something I've never felt ever before. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you can use it for benefit. Mm -hmm. Michelle saying, yes, yes, grounding with those feet on the, in the yes. earth. He is wonderful. You have his guidance and follow it. Yeah. And, you know, I think that that's why, you know, why we were inspired to start Human Harmonics last year was because we knew that we'd all need these kind of reboots, like to come together and share our wisdom and, and, and to say, oh, yeah, this is what's important. You know, I, I might still have that task to do or that problem or this issue, but if I keep coming back to this over and over again, then pretty soon that'll be more the empowered state will be what we live from. And then everything can have joy in it. You know, it can be just breathing it can be joyful. You know, being with friends, being alone can be joyful. It can be, you know, eating a good meal. It can be fasting and it can be joyful. You know, if we don't have the conditional responses and the reactive energy, we have the empowered energy to, to guide and lead us. So that's the goal of human harmonics and, and these calls. So I'm really happy that you guys could join today. Anybody want to say anything else? Yeah, another thing I've been noticing, especially since December, uh -huh. is I, um, a lot of numbers, like 111 and 1111 a lot. When I, when I look up my clock, like I noticed that when I look, glance down at the time, I'll see 1111 a.m. or 111 p.m. or 1111 p.m. I've been noticing that a lot since December. Awesome. Yeah, I have been, yeah. I've been noticing it for like years, like 10 years, all the numbers, four for fours. And there's certain people who are attracted to certain numbers like that. Right. But, but from what I can tell, it's really your mind is like the subconscious part of your mind is saying, look, you are in alignment. Look, things are working out for you. Look, you know, mm -hmm. this is a this is a, a synchronicity that you know you are a part of this earth energy and the collective consciousness and you're being supported right now yeah. um just a quick one i've actually noticed that the time with the the, the 11 11 and waking up at exactly on, on on a time and i was scared by it but i'm realizing that other people are feeling exactly the same feeling as me and you can go online and like look up, some people call them angel numbers, like there's messages from your angels and you can get like, like if you see one on ones all the time, usually that is a sign of, of connection and unity and oneness. But you know, there's other interpretations. So if you see it for a lot, it's kind of fun to explore. Like if I see, like one day I saw a bear, a skunk, a snake, you know, all in the same day. And I went home and I looked up the Native American meanings of these spirit animals because I'm like, this is a lot of animals to see all within a few hours. And it was, it was interesting how, you know, bear stands for strength or coyote is like that, that playful trickster energy. And, you know, this snake talks about, you know, more like the Kundalini energy rising and stuff. So to me, I like playing with the, like if I have a question and I'm looking and holding it in my heart and asking for higher guidance and then they get an answer and then a hawk flies over me and, the, uh, and a hawk stands for, to me, higher spirit, like a, a spiritual awareness or inner sight, a higher sight, then it's a confirmation. Oh, the, the, the animals are playing with me to confirm this, you know? So it can be numbers, it can be animal signs, it can be 
just the feeling of, you know, I get that great feeling of you think about somebody and then they call you or text you. And, you know, I had somebody reach out, I hadn't talked to in six years, and my former college roommate, and we had a two hour conversation. And it was like, well, that was interesting, you know, like that, that kind of um, synchronicity that, and then I talked to my sister and she said, yeah, I was just asking. I had heard this name and then I thought, I wonder how that person's doing. And then the next day I talked to that person's sister. And so it was, it was one of those things like, so then I could give her the answer to her question. And those things I think are so fun. Like I live for those kind of like synchronicities and say, I couldn't have arranged this. You know, it's just spirit moving through all of us, creating this grand play. So we might- I've done that with meeting. I've done that with meeting people that I've not seen in a while. And then I just see them walking down the street and you're like, oh my God, I was thinking about you. <laughs> so I've done it actually physically meeting them as well. Um, but I've done it with a phone, definitely that with a phone, especially with my best friend. I've got this girlfriend that we've so in sync. I'm so in sync with this particular lass. She is my best girlfriend. And That's we, just, yeah, we've always had that. It's something very, and she's very spiritual. spiritual very she's very into all that i have this deck of cards that a friend who's a house guest during the early part of COVID left behind for me and so i've been having some people over and we've been just doing intention circles like we'll, we'll like write something down and burn it as something we want to release and then call in like light some candles and bring in some energies and we've had there took some rose petals i had this big bowl of you know, dried rose petals since the time I moved in here. We scattered them on the pond outside. So we just kind of do this sacred play. So I thought if you guys want to, I can pull a card and just read it. And it's like some wisdom for us to carry through us the next two weeks. Is are you guys into that? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Totally. Wonderful. So the last I should say the last time it was a different deck a friend brought over that I thought was really fun was there was this card that my one friend picked and it was called flowering. And it was like, everything in your life is about to blossom and take off. And there was like all, all these things, like just don't be uh, concerned about how other people perceive you to scatter your seeds of bliss and joy around and love. And so that it felt really related to me because most of the summer I spent planting flowers in the garden and flowering, you know, and so, she got that card and I said, oh, we should put that back in the deck because everybody wants flowering. Like they want flowering love and abundance and so on. And then I usually just open the deck and feel and pick a card. And that time I got the number 14. So I, I counted in 14 cards and I got the flowering card. <laughs> so I, just, I find it like so cool. Like you, you have that intention, like, wow, I would like flowering and then you get it. And and he came to me in a different method than I usually do. So anyway, I'll stop talking and just pick one now. Okay, this one's called Searching Within. Mm -hmm. It's backwards, but you can see the image. Yeah. What I see and what I live is a mirror of my inner self. Not my outer, but my inner conditions are the source of my difficulties in life. With each of life's challenges, I search within to learn how I can grow stronger. Through this self-searching, I will find the best answers and the greatest healing. I study myself and transform myself. That's lovely. Mm. Very cosmic, too, if you look at the photo. Or the image. Are those tarot cards? Uh, I, they're not really... Tarot because they don't have, you know, the arcana in them. But, and, you know, I honestly don't have the box because you just left them behind. So I can't even attribute the author. But some of them are cool. Like this one says, stand tall and strong. Which is mm. nice. It kind of looks like it's interesting. Fun. It's interesting you got that search within because that's what we're doing as human harmonics. Yeah. And you got it for us, the yeah. human harmonics group. How about that? That's amazing. Yeah. I know, it's neat. I mean, because I did, I asked it for the whole group what would be something for us to practice. Yeah. yeah. So it's fun. I think, you know, be open to the number play. And then even you can ask when you see that, is there a message for me? And usually I'm like, keep going, you're doing great. Like if I see the 111, there's something like that. Or 
great. Yeah, yeah that, that's an area I don't know anything about is tarot. So, you, uh -huh. so maybe that's an idea you should bring someone uh, okay. in a future call, maybe on Sunday to yeah. speak that's about good. tarot. Yeah, and any of the divin divination or oracle mm. cards, you know, it's it's fun for me to see them from all different traditions, like and how mm. even have a friend who's from Turkey and you know reading yeah. the the uh, image left in the Turkish tea, um, coffee at the bottom, yeah, tea leaves and things like that. That there are um, my Facebook. <laughs> Go away. Okay. All kinds of, of ways, and to me, if we're doing it out of that place of of love and it's like really just a form of our self-knowledge being reflected back to us. I'm not, we're not really seeking outside of ourselves. It's just knowing that the wisdom within us, sometimes we're asking the personality to open up to this expanded consciousness that we really are to get the information as opposed to giving our power away, like saying, oh, I can't, I can't do anything unless I check, you know, my horoscope or I check this. You know, that's, that's not what it's about. It's really about knowing that we're all interrelated and these waves of harmony and frequency and coherence are really the way that we can flow above the turbulence in our lives and, and really enjoy the journey. It's really lovely, you know, to travel when you're not in a turbulent state. And and so I I would follow up on that day and then see if I'm, I have a friend who, who reads Thoreau and has, you know, and she lately said she's been asking people, well, what do you see in the image? Do you have, you know, if you look at the card, does it have a re relevancy to you? And then there's a woman, I, I like to follow her YouTubes on, her name is, it's like Ananda Shri, I'll type it here. And she does Vedic astrology, but at the end of it, Ananda. I think if you type that in. She does a tarot reading at the end of her um, her uh, Vedic astrology report that she usually does monthly, like or on the moons because it's it's like the moon energy is really important in Vedic astrology. Yeah. And so I like her presentation because she's you know been lived she's lived in India and she she has you know no ego she's just doing it from this place that she's really well versed in. and her her uh, tarot readings are really powerful. You know, she usually picks three cards at the end. So it's all kind of fun and playful. And to me, it's all, if it's all in the same frequency, I don't really look at um, like, you know, reading a book or watching a movie or something as better or less than, I always look at things in terms of frequency. Is this in my resonance? Like, does this add to my joy and my empowerment? If it makes me feel less empowered or less joyful, then it's not my thing. And I know other people who, you know, may prefer to, have those experiences of watching like a scary movie or something but I don't get the point of it at this point because I really like the higher frequencies but I don't judge it because I know even just getting your energy moving through your body for some people feels enlivening even though it can be fear to them it's better than boredom and so you know some of that is like on the emotional guidance scale I can't judge when somebody's in a really deep place of um, shame or grief or loss moving up to anger is actually moving up whereas for me it's moving down and so it's like it's for us to hold that place of compassion for others saying wow you know at least they've got energy moving in their body even if it's not in a, in a way that feels coherent it's still moving and then at some point they might get to a place of, of you know contentment and then bliss you know and then i'm really excited to see like as a group energy can we go to the higher octaves because they're available to us you know what's beyond bliss and ecstasy and oneness is, is embodying more of that divine light energy into the physical form. And that looks really fun future for me. So I'm glad I have you guys to hang out with and co-create with. Very I have a tarot story, um, if Jay wants to hear it. Um, I've got my, one of my uh, friends was the, who I was a living landlady at the time before I got married. Um, she's a tarot reader, she's a um, psychic. And uh, her mother is as well. And it was her mother at this event that did my tarot reading. I mean, I'd done them in the past, but she did a tarot reading. And she she told me at the time, Sue said, my mum is absolutely brilliant. You'll be amazed by it. And I'm like, okay, go on then. So I went and had a tarot reading. 
she actually predicted something I never in a million years thought would ever happen. I never thought I'd ever get married. Um, I was convinced I would never get married. And she predicted that I would marry and someone connected with Earth. Um, she saw Earth in the sign. And uh, I mean, my, the guy I ended up with, Pete, he was a gardener, a landscape gardener, and he's a Taurus. And he's the man I'm with. <laughs> I never dreamed that it would ever happen. And we've been married over 17 years now. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that story. That's beautiful. Yeah. I, I feel like sometimes when we're guided, like we're, we're kind of in between a decision-making point. That's a lot of times when my friends get clients saying, hey, I, I can't really figure out which way to go. And she said, well, you know, the information presented can be life-changing. Are you ready for that? Like, are you really ready for some of the information to come forth? Because sometimes we're ready on one level to leave behind something and enter a new aspect of life. Like for me, I'm not really sure where I'm going to live after two weeks or even less than that. But I trust in spirit so much that I know it'll be even better than I can imagine if I stay in the higher frequencies. So to me, it's more of a game of, surrender and allowing to the part of me that knows more and then the personality is just fed enough to not um to not get into trouble because <laughs> if i if i knew my whole life plan for the rest i might be like whoa no that's too big or like i'm not sure i want that but if i'm i'm i'm, I'm given enough information for the next highest excitement if i'm coming from a place of contentment at least in the now and not fear then i know only good can come to me so that's uh, the, the mystery and the magic of it. And, and so I do think any of the tools that we use to, to come back to our alignment and our emotional well-being, and also to come to a place of compassion for others, because you know sometimes it's easy to take some of the information and then turn around and judge somebody else. But like the whole idea is just to have compassion that they're in their own state of moving up their emotional guidance system too, and it's a perfect place for them. And we don't know what their history was like, you know, so a lot of people are overcoming trauma from, you know, severely dysfunctional childhoods and, or, you know, could have been in a war or they might've had a drug problem at one point. And so we don't really know what their history is, but we can love them anyway, because it's some level of connection. We are the same. We are one. It's all divinity. And, and so I, and, you know, I think to you know, wrap up today's call with just that reminder and, and to, to do that inner transformation as the card suggested, as we, we anchor in these times. And I, I do believe that it'll get easier and easier as the year progresses, but these first couple months, we're still kind of letting go of the momentum of, of 2020 and the challenges, and we're picking up the momentum of the grace and the ease and the, and the joy, and just to align more with that as we go forward. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've already read it all my goals, goals down for this year, to set those intentions. Nice. I'm glad. It, it helps direct the energy and, you know, yeah. and, and to do it in that, in the way that, again, the mind can serve the heart is really the most valuable way to, to set any intention. And because you're, you know, an active part of human harmonics, Jay, it's nice that, um, like a feel that you're, it's going to be fun to see how the year unfolds for you and, right. and, and Penny too, and everyone else who's now joining to see if, if it is indeed, you know, getting better and better all the time. And it's 12, 12 here, just to let you know. <laughs> Idea <laughs> numerology. James. Yeah. yeah. And she should be doing another call soon. Oh, nice. Looking forward to the 17th with Donna. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of her stuff recently. She sounds really good. Donna yeah. Delory. These guys, whoever may not know, Donna Delory is um, was used to, you know, had been singing with Madonna in her early twenties, and um, is started doing kirtan or devotional music. And so we're having a concert on, on January seventeenth with Human Harmonics. So sign up for that. Uh, again, it's humanharmonics.life if you don't know the the website. And from that also i'm gonna have a second call january 23rd and i think jamie is coming up with one for january yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. so yeah and and the concert's kind of big for us because we haven't done anything that um 
you know, technologically advanced. And so it's great because Amanda Jo, who's part of the team, she's mostly been behind the scenes, but she's a musician and a vocalist. And so she's going to be handling a lot of that. And so we're very blessed to have her on the team. And yeah, I'm excited for that. Thanks for mentioning it, Jay. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, is the January newsletter coming out soon? Yeah, we, we'll have it out before um, the right. concert. And, uh, um, and Granny's actually writing it this time. She's going to be writing it um, in the next couple of days. And it takes us a while to get it uploaded because of the technical stuff going back and forth. But it should go out early or not the last day of the month, like sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for all your support, guys. Yeah. Love you so much. Be well, yeah. be happy. And reach out to us if, if you, we're gonna be starting a group, maybe through Facebook, where we can post comments and chit chat with each other. So keep, group. keep you posted on that. It's uh, not sure which format we're gonna use yet, but that's part of the idea is to build more community and hold support for each other in between the calls. Sounds Thank good. you, it's been lovely. Thank okay. you. Thanks so much. It's great to have you join today, me and Michelle. And uh, we look forward to you joining next time. Yep, I'll see you on the 23rd. You'll see yep. me. Oh, well, we'll get to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's a Saturday. Bye. All right, take care. All right. Bye. Let's have everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.